To take snow sheep as a trophy is not an easy task even for an experienced hunter. The natural habitat of this unique, incredibly tough animal is dispersed over the vast territory of the eastern Russia. It is quite remote from the civilization. This is the second part of the hunt where we set an ambitious goal in one expedition to take two trophies, the Kalima and the Ahotsk snow sheep, in only eight hunting days. This is a story about how mountains should never be underestimated about how valuable time is in the unpredictable conditions of the wild hunt and how luck can turn away from a hunter, leaving him without much desired trophy. Anyway, this story is both informative and interesting. The most important thing I wanted to show in this film is that we have not lost hope and optimism. These two are the most important for the hunter pursuing his goal. Mountain hunt for the Yahotsk snow sheep. We've been thinking for a long time if we should show a hunt without a shot. But anyway, it's a hunt. And I think it was fine since we had three chances to take the trophy of the Yahotsk snow sheep. In the first film, Sergei managed to get the first trophy. The Kalima snow sheep was taken on the fifth day of the hunt. Out of the planned three days of hunting, we spent five to take the Kalima sheep. Now there are only three days left to take the Ahotsk snow sheep. I measured the distance, set it, and I clearly saw the head. Alexander Malkov, 52 years old, the organizer of the hunt. Did you shoot? The huntsman Nikolai discovered the Kalama sheep on the fifth day of a long search. Despite not the most outstanding trophy quality, it was decided to take it. Exactly a large trophy sheep we saw only a couple of times and in the distance. Well, of course, we took not the trophy we had expected. Seven years old, we had already walked 90 kilometers and in total climbed 12,000 meters. It's fine! This is the most tender lamb meat. Two muscles which run along the spine are not involved in movements at all. Now we will fry it, make medallions. It cooks really fast, really just seconds. Alexandru Batitsky, 33 years old, a chef. With sheep it's like this. A trophy is taken and then cooked straight away. What is cooked? Lightly fried liver, like medium rare, or some try it raw. Well, tastes differ. You should eat caviar with large spoons here in the Far East. <laughs> yeah, it's an abundance here. This caviar is really fresh. Dmitry Bilalupsky, 35 years old, a junior huntsman. They went that side. Yeah, that side and that. Some came here and seven left that side. Now we'll call the helicopter. Tomorrow morning we'll relocate in the natural habitat of the Ahotsk snow sheep. We'll have only three days to take it. The next morning the team was preparing to be transferred to the habitat of the Ahotsk snow sheep. The helicopter arrived at the scheduled 11 o'clock. Are you okay? Or did you have any troubles? There were some troubles, but we are fine. Kalsov Vitali Yurievich, the helicopter commander. As I understand, you've taken a decent trophy. Yes, we have. As people say, everything is included in the price. Yeah, all inclusive. In five days, the hunters saw many snow sheep. But the majority of them were females with lambs and young males of three to five years. After all, the helicopter probably created a certain danger for them, and the large sheep left. An experienced pilot confirmed that during the descent, 
the helicopter blades really create powerful air strikes, reflecting from the mountains and thundering for kilometers. It could have scared the wary old males. Within 10 minutes, a plan was developed for the upcoming landing with minimal noise. The team will have to fly only about 70 kilometers by helicopter. Despite this small distance, the mountains in the Ahotsk region are strikingly different from the Magadan ones. Instead of gently sloping grass-covered hills, the mountains in these places are mostly steep and rocky, and their foothills are densely covered with numerous conifers. There is an opinion that it is not entirely correct to observe the landing site. But nevertheless, the whole team was watching through the window in order to determine the cut hills. This is the main sign proving that there is the sheep in these places. Of course, the skill of Vitaly Yurovich was striking. He landed the helicopter where we needed it, and not where it was convenient. The landing was carried out directly in the riverbed, close to the water and the forest. The team arrived in the habitat of the Hotsk snow sheep in the Habarovsk territory, with the accumulated fatigue over five days. They'll soon have water and firewood, which is very important for the life in the camp. Is everything okay? Fine. Well, I don't know yet. Water, everything. About sheep, we don't know either. The main thing is that there is a lot of firewood. Yes. The helicopter was unloaded in just 15 minutes. Having wished the hunters a successful hunt, the helicopter team took off the same way as they had landed. As agreed, leaving the hunting zone, the pilot went along the riverbed, trying to fly as low as possible, reducing to zero the echo from the blades chopping the air. The team started to set up a camp. At the same time, the huntsmen examined the surrounding mountains through binoculars. It was only 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and the team had enough time to make the approach if the right sheep is found. Just 10 minutes later, Dmitry informed us that there were two interesting sheep on the top of the mountain. One was lying, another was standing. The distance here is about one and a half kilometers. Can you see the second one? Yes, I see. Yes, the one that lies is better. It's like a bull. They look the same. Oh, sorry. Let's get ready and go. The ascent is 600 meters. Let's climb, walk along the ridge. And two sheep are there. The horns of a sheep do not twist. But like a bull, they go to the sides. Let's see. The entire natural habitat of the snow sheep is located in the northern regions of the Asian part of the Russian Federation. It occupies a huge territory. The density of sheep varies depending on the climate. Bighorns feed mainly on herbaceous plants, as well as mushrooms and lichens. Snow sheep are officially divided into four types. The Putarana snow sheep, the Yakutsk snow sheep, the Karak snow sheep, and the Kamchatka snow sheep. Visually, the species are almost indistinguishable from each other. The main difference concerns the pattern and color of the skin. They climb the ridge and go this way. But we go there. We'll see them both very clearly, in full view. The wind is in our direction and up. Once we climb the ridge, the wind may change. It blows from two sides and up, 
If we go from the other side, it is not clear whether we will be able to approach or not. We'll pass below them. We won't be able to pass here, right? That way. Okay, let's follow that way. After long discussions, it was decided not to approach the sheep along the ridge, but to walk along the mountains and climb the neighboring ridge. Since both big horns were clearly visible at the summit, the hunters intended to approach them at about 600 meters, occupy a stable position and make a shot. And stable stones covering the whole slope were the main difficulty of this ascent. I still suggested going up from the left and taking a position there. What's more, I measured the distance. It was supposed to be about 600 meters. It's quite acceptable. However, the huntsman, for some reason, persuaded me to climb higher. At that moment, stones started falling. When we reached the position, of course, big horns had left, although the distance was only 300 meters. realized that it was a huge mistake. There was no point to carry this 9kg carbine, a high-precision weapon designed for long distances if you come at 300 meters. The huntsmen did not listen to me. They decided to come closer. I don't know why they did it. The hunt is wasted. What the f***? 300 meters. Why are we here? Of course, there were a lot of emotions, a lot of words. But I understand that the huntsmen were doing their job. By habit, they lead the hunter as close as possible for a shot. It's two or 300 meters. These tactics have already been worked out for years. The huntsmen were sure that the sheep were frightened not by the falling stones. Nikolai and Dmitri unanimously suggested that the animals cross the ridge to the evening pasture. Both huntsmen began climbing to the summit. Sergei, on the contrary, decided to go down and have time to settle in a new camp before dark. Sometimes you have to rely more on your experience, knowledge and negotiate with the huntsmen in advance at what distance you are able to shoot confidently. When you finally realize that you are already close to the camp, there is an hour or two of walking left. You allow yourself to drink water, quench thirst. This should never be done during the approach, because the legs become turned to jelly, hard to go. Thus, hunt becomes too dangerous for your body. Most of the mountain water, be it rivers or small streams, is drinkable. Nevertheless, after drinking mountain water, Sergei eats a lemon. Lemon is the strongest natural antiseptic. It neutralizes any infection that has got into the body. There were some lamb droppings on the top, as it should be, and downstairs, when you descend, quite a lot. They need a ram, a trophy. Why is everything so sad and thoughtful? Because we are at work here. That is why the organizer worries about everything. The huntsmen do their job well, anyway. They wanted the best. You know the rest. Of course, it's a sad. Sad that it was a really good ram with unusual horns. Tomorrow, let's get up early in the morning at 3 a.m., have breakfast and set off with the huntsman without delay. It's already light at 4 a.m. I'll cook breakfast earlier. He'll quickly see us off and go back to bed. When I worked here for the first year, it happened sometimes that, in the beginning, the hunters couldn't find the sheep because of bad weather or something else. Then we started to cook Russian borscht, <laughs> and the rams were soon found. Well, today we'll have lamb borscht. It was at twilight when Sergei, watching from the camp through binoculars, saw two grazing sheep. They will lie down now. 
They were on the left side of the halo. Now they have crossed it and are going down. Through binoculars, we identify that these were rather big males. But it was impossible to determine the exact distance. The rangefinder built into the binoculars refused to show the distance to the grazing bighorn sheep. But another rangefinder, which can tell a distance of up to 6 kilometers, remained in Dmitri's backpack. We determined by eye that the distance was about 4 kilometers. However, Sergei did not take into account that at dusk, the distance to objects seems to be greater than in reality. It's unnecessary to go far. They are here nearby. As it became dark, Nikolai and Dmitri returned to the camp. Sergei immediately took the rangefinder and measured the distance. 131, not really far. The sheep were much closer than it seemed. I measured that the distance was 2,131. Just 15 minutes separated us from the opportunity to take the Hosk snowsheep. Moreover, the slope was insignificant. It was decided to move out to the rams in the morning, as soon as it starts to dawn. At 3 a.m., we need to get up as soon as dawn and immediately go out. It's the second hunting day for the Hotsk snowsheep. It was sunny yesterday, but we didn't take the opportunity. Today's the second day. As you can see, it's foggy. Tomorrow is the last day. It's not clear if the helicopter will be able to take us in such weather. The rain intensified. When it turned into a downpour two hours later, it was decided to return to the camp. The shower continued throughout the day. Every day we'll lose hope to take the trophy. Despite the bad weather, one of the huntsmen spent the whole day in the mountains. Kolya, the base is calling. Nikolai decided to find a trophy sheep by all means. From time to time he got in touch, reporting that he was observing several groups, but there were no big bighorns in them. Another day is over. If the beast had been taken, the meat would be frying now. Maybe we'll be luckier tomorrow. It's our last day. The last time we had a hunt was last year. Full 10 days, on the ninth day, and here they come, just before departure. A female hunter was one of them. She was weighing just about 30 kilograms. The gun too big for her. A woman on the hunt is nonsense. A woman always has a room where she can do almost everything, like washing the dishes or cooking. <laughs> It didn't stop raining even in the evening. Every mountain hunter knows firsthand what rain and fog mean in the mountains. Time at such moments seems to flow infinitely. Here's Nikolai. You're soaking wet. What about hot tea? Come in. Well, the bar sign didn't work. Something went wrong. The last day of the hunt has come. Despite the fog in the mountains, the hunters set off in search of snow sheep.
We've seen some fresh footprints. The huntsman saw the footprints both yesterday and the day before yesterday. The sheep is here. Now we're returning to the camp, as the sky is full of clouds. The hunt is very difficult, but unfortunately, unsuccessful. Well, anyway, it's a huge experience. By lunchtime, the fog had completely disappeared. Visibility became excellent. So we decided to climb a high hill and examine everything from there. The main mistake that all ambitious hunters face sooner or later is the overestimation of their capabilities and luck. Eight planned hunting days may not be enough to get two worthy trophies, especially on such difficult food hunts. It was already the eighth day of the expedition, and more than 120 kilometers traveled made themselves felt. We climbed a high hill, really high. Mountain on the left and mountain on the right, they connect. Bighorns could not be found. Despite this, the places here were ideal for snow sheep. Empty beds, as well as females with lambs walking here and there, served as a good evidence of this. They are lying well. After about an hour of observation, Alexander got in touch. He reported that Dmitry had good news. Dmitry told Alexander on the radio that he was observing four sheep, which were of interest as trophy. It was decided to go to the camp before joining Dmitry, because the hunters needed time to relax and have lunch before the final attempt to take a trophy. We have walked 130 kilometers. The sky is clear, the sun is shining. Tomorrow morning the helicopter will fly. Well, now or never, it's the last chance to take the Hotsk sheep. The huntsmen have seen four sheep. One of them may be a trophy. This time Alexander, the organizer of the hunt, took on the role of a guide. The hunters had to walk about six kilometers from the camp to the position of Dmitry. Alexander brought the hunters to Dmitry's position in less than two hours. Look at the top of that small hill. They are walking back and forth. One of them has horns going out to the sides. They're over there, on the ridge. Really? Yeah, walking back and forth. They've been here long enough. Let's hurry. They cross the ridge. Can you see anything? Yeah. Over there. They are having fun, fighting. Some of them quite young. Moving back and forth. Nothing. They are behind the ridge now. When have they crossed it? About 20 minutes ago. It was the third opportunity in two days to take the Ahotsk sheep, but we ran out of time. It was already six o'clock in the evening. The sun would set in less than an hour, but the distance to the sheep was about four kilometers. Returning to the camp, the hunters could observe groups of bighorns, but made only of females and lambs but not a single trophy adult male sheep was among them. Nevertheless, the hunt was quite exciting and interesting. We saw the sheep. We had some chances to take it. The organizers did their job well. I would like to note the high standard of living that Alexander organized for us. The service was excellent. Our chef Alexander served us excellent breakfasts, lunches, and dinners. Alexander suggested extending our expedition for another day or two, 
but unfortunately we could not afford this, because in five days we had another expedition for the Karak and Chukotkashi. The circumstances developed in such a way that the hunter had to visit these unique places again. And next time, he will definitely take his Hotsk sheep. The Hotsk sheep is taken! Well, let's hope it turns out well this time. Let's go. There is water and firewood. So we'll stay until we take it. A good sheep. It's moving to the left and up. Here, this way. It's leaving. If it's not danger, then let him go.